Okay, so this will be your last section before lunch. And we'll be talking about how to do statistical modeling and testing in tidyverse. So just to set the objective up front, so here in, in this section, uh, the, the, the test we, we are going to do will be, we want to do model-based summary for feature intensity. Uh, for all proteins in every run. In the previous two sections, so we talk about a way to do the protein summarization, which is to take the log of sum, essentially adding all the feature intensity together, and then take a log two transformation. And right now, we try to move a step forward, try to thinking about, okay, if for one protein, then the feature in one protein, probably we, we may want to model it those intensity in some way. And then we can actually extract the model-based summary, essentially some parameter, and to get to get a sum summarized value for the protein abundance. So in 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 this section, we are going to use the linear model again, and then we'll we'll work through the model object a little bit. And the two approach will focus on so we'll first to use the for loop approach and then to see what we can do with the for loop and some limitation or issue we have with the for loop. And in the second part of this section, we're going to talk a lot about how to do this in uh, this column, essentially the some nice strategy in tidyverse. Random effect. So, uh, on, wh on which uh, uh, stage of uh, randomness you are talking about? So, if you have a bunch of patients who are doing random pairing, you want to do random pairing and then treating a base of your function. Base of Okay, just to su su summarize your, your, your question. So essentially you're asking, so is it necessary to consider random effect to account for run-to-run -run or day-to-day -day variation? Yeah. So I think definitely we need to consider run-to-run -run variation. Just think about if you run the replicate uh, back run, and uh, so there must be some variation. And the, the better you can actually describe or characterize those variability, then you, you, you could actually do a better job to distinguish the systematic change from from the I mean random chance. And also if you, you are even talking about the day to day variation, that could be huge. So say think about if you run a bunch of NASDAQ data in one day and say the next day or even one week later. So their variability or even the the intensity level could change. Yeah, so definitely it, it's a good idea to consider round to round variation, day to day variation. And also, if you actually you are running a bunch of a big number of map sample uh, by mass spec, it may be a, a good idea even from the uh, study design point of view. You may want to create some block to to run your sample. For example, you may create one block for one day and somehow analyze those those uh, the mass spec run within block and then combine the block combine the, the summary from each block later on. So, yeah. Do the blocking, you, you, you mean to do the design for the blocking or the analysis of blocking? Do the actual fitting. I think, so, I think what I'm going to present today will be somehow well, one specific case, but the approach would be quite general. So, so I, I think you are mostly asking about so how to do the modeling and uh, what what's the consideration uh, we should take into account in, in the modeling. I think that's kind of well out of scope of, of this, this section. So th this section essentially would tell you the tool that you can use, and however, how to decide the grouping information and what's the 
the factor you want to consider in your linear model or some other sort of model. I think that's um, another part of the So just just to um, add one one more thing. So if you if you are um, attending attending the, the the section next week on uh, the statistics for aspect proteomics, yeah. So they they will be have lots of discussion on that aspect. Okay. Okay. So I load the tidyverse and also the data set. And we just dis discussed that we'll do a model-based summary for the feature log intensity for all protein every row. Okay. Now let's first uh, try to try to uh, address this task with a very simple approach, which is by using for loop, and I, I'll first to normalize our data set. That's what we did in previous section. Okay. Now, before before we summarize all the proteins, let's start starting from a simpler example where we want to summarize one protein. And here to make all the effect or parameter more clear. So I'll first do a filtering. So I'll first get the measurement from this particular protein, and I'll just take the measurement from three rounds, one, two, and three. So here I, I use a filter function uh, from dplyr to take the subset of, of observation. Now I call the LM function, and the first argument to pass on to the LM is the formula that we, we want to use. So essentially I say, uh, in, in, in this linear model, I'm interested in knowing, okay, what's the relationship between this log two intensity from the light channel, and what's the, its relationship to the run and the feature effect. So we. In this case, we have three runs, and we have several features in, in, in this particular protein. Yes? Right, so. Right, so. Let's go back to this figure. So here, in this in this protein, we have several features, and the feature essentially is a combination. It's actually just a, a charged peptide, charged fragment. So you have peptide sequence and you have transition here. So that's what I mean by feature. So in this case, we have nine, or six features, in heavy and light, and yeah, just as a recap. We actually use the feature from the heavy channel. Essentially, we use every feature in the heavy channel compute the median log intensity. And we equalize the median of log intensity to normalize the whole data set. And after that, we'll use the feature intensity from the light channel to do the quantification. And previously, when, when in the previous section, what we did is actually, in this case, we have six features. So in every run, we'll sum up together those six feature intensity and then take a log transformation. That will one, be one value for one run, one protein. And now in this section, we're going to thinking about if, if we can, if we can, whether we can actually model this feature intensity in consideration of two effects. One will come from the wrong effect, and the other is 
just for different features, okay, they they may they may deviate from some uh, common value differently. Okay. So here I I'll do a LN fit. So as we just discussed, so we want to see the relationship between the uh, log to intensity in light channel in consideration of the run and the feature effect. And you may notice that here I add a zero plus here. That would actually essentially to re remove the intercept. So just to be clear. Usually we'll run in this way. So we consider the log to intensity and its relationship between with the run and the feature. So the fit the fit coefficient would have one intercept that say, okay, for for all those features, they are they are centered around this intercept. And in round two we have this this shift. So that shift down from this intercept. In round three we shift up uh, from this intercept. And then for every features here, here we have three features, they, they also have different shifts. That would be the essentially so for example in round two in round two and this feature by fitting this model the fit value will be this intercept minus this value and minus this value would be the fit value uh, from the linear model. Round one round Round one to two thirty two be the wrong ID identifier for each wrong for each math stack wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's essentially the intercept that would actually take wrong one of the reference. Right. Yeah, but somehow like you already point out it's not quite convenient if by you using this this kind of representation because when we, when we want to get wrong one, we, okay, now we need to go to the intercept. And if we want to wrong two, then we will go with, with the, this parameter. So that's why, in some case, we don't want to have this intercept. So that will give us directly, okay, that, that will be the, the value for wrong one, two and three, and for different features. So that's the corresponding shift we will get. It's a linear regression. So in this case, since it's string and it's string and it's uh, um, essentially the categorical data, so it's actually an ANOVA. Yeah. So if your predictive value is the qualitative variable rather than quantitative variable, then you are essentially doing ANOVA. Okay, so, so we can fit this linear model and save it in the object fit. And in, yes, yesterday we we kind of talk about several utility functions that can help us to extract some relevant information from the fit object. For example, we can use a summary function that would tell us pretty much uh, the what's the tell us the summary of the function fit, uh, what the formula we use, and what's the residual residual would be residual would be the one your real value how your real value deviate from the fit value from the linear model and also some coefficient here we have we are considering wrong and feature effect we have three wrongs here and then we have three features three wrongs here and three features here and also some other statistics and 
as we noticed uh, already from ye yesterday's lecture, so it's quite complex. So when we when we try to extract some information that we are interested in for follow up or subsequent analysis, so that would require to use some either either you dip into the list and to extract the element that you want, or you use some those utility function, for example, to get the coefficient of each to 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 get a fit coefficient you know, in your model, or you can pass with the sum summary function that give you a more detail about okay what's the point estimate uh, standard error p value and the p value. So from here, so from here we already have some piece of the information that we can use for uh, run for protein summarization. So here we have three runs and uh, three features. So essentially that tell us those three runs would be the the estimate for those three runs essentially would be the expected log trend, expected load uh, intensity for those three runs. At the feature level then we will add uh, those point estimate for each, each of the feature. So essentially, if we, our goal here is to extract the run level summarization for each protein, those three columns will be the one that we go after. So in this case, I'll create a table and uh, I'll get the effect from, I'll get the estimate from, from here, and then, essentially, essentially I first get the, the, the coefficient from, from the function fit. That give me, essentially, this named, this named factor. And the value here are the, the one that I needed. So I will create a table with the estimate uh, from the value of this fit, fit coefficient. And then the name here will be that tell me, okay, what this value, what the effect this value is related to. And as I mentioned earlier, so those three columns are, are the one that we are really interested in, ra rather than the feature level uh, information. So we'll take, so after So after we first extract those estimates, so we want to filter out the last three rows. And then after that, I will change the name. I will remove, I will re remove the wrong from, from the effect name. So that give us a somehow cleaner representation. So here we have the effect from the three rounds and the estimate for the three rounds. So that that would be the the protein summarization the protein summarization in the three run here in, in in this mini data set. Any question for this part? So that that, that would be the smallest pieces that I mean we will we'll carry on in for the for loop. Okay, now this part, this part is just for one protein. And now when we try to extend, uh, the, extend the, this process to, to get the, the summary value for all protein, we first need to, we'll first do, do a for loop here. So we first need to know what's the protein, what, what's a unique protein in our data set here. And what I have in this for loop will be, so I will first to create, create a null object that I'm going to save the result to, uh, to this object. Essentially, I'll iterate over each of the protein, and then 
get the summary for that protein, and then I'll bind the the output, the summary output to this object. So essentially, here I iterate over proteins, and I first for each of them, I first do a filter to get a subset for that one protein. This is the whole data set. The train di two two would be the whole data set. So in each iteration, I first do a filter to get a subset, a subset for one protein. And for this subset, again, I'll do a linear model and save, save the result of the linear model to this uh, fit object. And we, we know already how to extract the fit parameter from this fit model. And then after that, we'll assemble the result essentially to get the, the coefficient estimate and the length of the effect. And also because right now we, we want to combine all the proteins, so we also want to add one, one column to represent the length of proteins. And after that, we get the result for one protein, and then we find this one protein uh, to to the object that was specified in the beginning. Okay. Now Now the output here essentially give me okay for each protein in each run and what's the run level summarization for this protein. Any question for this? Okay, so the the question was about so if you have an outlier so. If you do have outlier in your data set, so both uh, linear modeling and also uh, log of sum, they are they are not quite robust to to the outlier. So meaning, if you have one extreme value, that, that that's going to drive your uh, estimate to some that some unexpected value that you want. Um, so, so the purpose here again is just to provide some technique. Okay, so sometimes we may we may want to do a linear modeling uh, to do the summarization, and to make sure that we can actually go work work with those uh, complex uh, model objects. So that's the whole purpose uh, for for this section. Yeah. So if we want to know more about like what what you what's the ring. Uh, random effect, effect you want to consider and you do the summarization. I think, yeah, next week there, there will be lots of discussion here. So, which of the other Feature on what? Limit of detection of feature. Um, Right. That's again. So, so the the missing value of feature. That's again a quite complex uh, problem by its, by itself. So yeah, like you say, sometimes it can be because okay, it's below the detection limit. So we may want to use some sensory uh, mechanism to impute the missing value, and that's indeed what the package called MS that down uh, for for that actually. So here, here actually we we are considering okay for the idea case, and uh, we don't actually really to target for those outlier and the missing value. We just I mean take take the original feature intensity as it is, and to think about okay then if we want to apply uh, this technique, then what what can we do in terms of uh, in, in, at the level of workflow? I mean to to get the workflow now smoothly.
okay, so for, for this very first approach, okay, it indeed give us um, the correct answer here. However, it's usually not uh, recommended uh, to, to do in this way. The major problem is in, in, the, in the very end here, because in every iteration you see we we get a summary for one protein. And then we want to combine the result, the output here, we bind to this, this bigger uh, data frame. So in every iteration, when we do the binding, we are actually making a copy of this original one and then to, to bind the result. So essentially, in the first iteration, OK, you, you just add this one. In the second iteration, you are copying the result from the previous one. In the third one, you are doing another copy of the previous two. So that's not very efficient. So that's you, usually what you want to uh, avoid in your workflow, this kind of pattern. So another way to do that would be, again, we'll do a for loop. However, the, the way to assemble the output is slightly different. We loop over the protein, and then for each protein, we fit the model and extract the, the summary, and then we save the result into a list. So one list, uh, one, one element in the list for one protein. And in the, in the very end, we combine the result into a data frame through this fine row function from uh, dplyr. So here, in approach two, it's very similar to approach one. The main or the key difference here would be, in the very beginning, uh, we initialize the, this vector with the length of the number of protein we have. And in every iteration, we save, we save the result to each of the elements um, of the list, and then in the very end, we simply uh, bind, bind the result together. When you, when you append the list to the spawn, does it always do the result at the same time? So does it do the same thing at the same time you do the R bind? When you're You are seeing this case? No, not the bind row. Okay. I'm saying in general. In general. When you're adding an element to the list in R, right? Mm -hmm. It gets the list gets. You are not recalling. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the same thing. No, no. When you're doing an R bind on the data frame, you're actually doing copy. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So, so here in approach two, it's not really the the bind row making the magic. So if you still if you still bind the row, if you you still try to bind the the, the new result to, to the to the previous one, then you are still recalling uh, lots of time. Yeah so now the key here in approach two would be so we we first create a list and then we in every iteration we save the result to the list and then we, we do the copy in the very end. Okay, so the approach with the for loop that we discussed so far, I think uh, they, they are two major issues that you may notice. The first thing is in the two approach, we actually need to rely on those utility functions. We make a function call and we, we make a LM fit and then to extract the result and we need to assemble the result um, from, from, from those fit parameters. And essentially the procedure is not very tidy because the output object, the result of the, the model object, they are not tidy. So the whole procedure somehow get a bit messy. You need to get a way to extract those information. And sometimes for different parameter of interest, you need to use different way 
true or with different utility function to, to track those results. So it's not very convenient. And the second thing is in, in our in our for loop actually we did not save the fit model. So say for example if at some point you think okay maybe it's also a good idea to get the summary of for example uh, standard error or confidence interval. If you want to get that then at a set at a second stage you, you need to go back again and you need to refit the model. And that's also not quite a good idea. Of course, um, during the for loop, you can actually save your model in another list and then to extract those, those model objects if you need it later on. But then in, in that situation, you need to worry about so how, how the matching of each of the model to each of the post. So you need to do a good job uh, to match between them. So the approach I'm, I'm going to present will be essentially to address the, those two drawbacks. The first one, so I'll first talk about uh, another R package also in the tidyverse called Bloom that give us uh, three tidy method uh, for, for the model object that you, you can actually from the messy model object and then to get the three level of the summary in, in a very tidy way. And then we'll, we'll talk about the list column that essentially is a way to assemble or arrange your data set in, in a structurally informative way. All right, so for the Bloom, as I just mentioned, it's an R package that turns the model object into data frame. That means it can go with the other, other function, other workflow in type tidyverse uh, smoothly. And here we have um, we have three, three, three methods to provide three level of summary, parameter level, and also observation level in the model level. So before that, first to load the library and let's let's again make a smaller we'll use the subset of the original data set and we fit the model and now again we use summary function to, to get the to get a summarized result of this, this model of it. And let's first take a look at, at this printout of this summary. So there are quite a few information here. Number one, the residual here. The residual would be the, the deviation of our observation from, from, the fit of, from the fit value. And also the coefficient could be probably the, the most important thing that we care about. That essentially tell us what's your, the point estimate and also some associated variability with, with this point estimate in this, in this part of the result. And also there are some results here like p-value that you may care about. Now, if we, we, if we want to extract this part, we actually need to have some additional step. Here we are using the, the function code and then by adding this toy function that give us this one. Um, but anyone know what's the what's the class of this this result? Hmm? It's a matrix. It's still a matrix. And so that means those name, those vector name, they are actually the row name. So you can now that let's think about the, the tidy data that we discussed. 
in tidy data, we want to make sure um, every column is a variable and every row is an observation. And now we are missing one column for the name of the for the vector name. Instead, it's restored in the row name field. And also, by doing this, it's actually not a data frame. So we still need to have another step to get it back to, to the data frame. And another question would be, if you want to, for this data frame, if you want to extract the information in the last column, what would you do? Because there are some special symbol here. You can do it easily for the, to extract the estimate column. But you can do that. Yeah, you need to do that. Yeah, so. Right, and so this procedure is kind of messy, right? So the first thing you, you get some messy step to get this format, and this format is still not perfect uh, for subsequent analysis. That's for one model, and if you have multiple models, so you definitely want, want to know, I mean, for each model, and then what's the corresponding um, uh, vector name for each of them, so, so that you can compare. So that, I think that's a cool, cool thing of, of the room. So essentially, with this tidy function, that turns, that turns the model object into this form. Essentially, you create a new column called turn, that would be those row name, and then keep those um, convention name, but also also to change those um, strange names into a more uh, convenient way that we can work on. So the, this tidy function uh, give, us, give us a parameter level of summary. So essentially here, each row is an observation for one parameter. For example, row one would be the, the, the parameter for wrong, wrong one, and you get the estimate standard error and some other statistics. And the augment here, um, the augment here essentially is giving you the original, original measurement with some additional column that start with this uh, period here. So for example, for this feature, for this feature in wrong one, in the original data set, the log two intensity is 16.83. And this column, the column fitted would be the, the one from the function fit. And also, the residual of this observation from the function fit, et cetera. So for all, all those columns that start with, with a dot sign here, that's the, the new column that add from the, your function fit. And the glance here give you the overview of the model fitting. So essentially give you the R square, the sigma value and some other some other standard statistics. All right. So 
we with those three uh, three function in Bloom, then we can actually we can actually combine with the strategy that we just mentioned uh, in dplyr, the group by and the do to extract the summary for each protein very efficiently. So essentially, Bloom is IDR model, essentially. Okay, so now there is a third approach that we, we want to um, discuss. Again, now we are essentially using the tidyverse approach rather than the full loop. The first thing we need to do again is to define the analysis unit in this case. In this case, it's the protein because we want to summarize we want to summarize feature intensity in every protein. So we can use the group by to define or to add the grouping information to the original data set here. Now here in this line is a bit long, so let's look at each piece one by one. So again we'll do we'll do a Linear model fitting here by calling the LM, and with the same uh, formula um, that we discussed. And the only thing you need to notice is that we talk about when, when we want to pass the group data through do, we want to specify what what the data, what the group data should comes in in the function call. So it will be in this position. So we'll use the theory here. And then after that, after that we'll do it. We'll do a tidy method from Broom on the fit model, and we pass through. Uh, we pass through the, this process through do that would essentially to to arrange arrange the result for each protein. Um, so the question was about so what e exactly we we are doing using do or why we should why we should you use do that that's probably the, the question. So previously we we kind of talked about a lot about how to use group by and the summarize, right? But one limitation with summarize is that that you need to use summary summary function. The summary function is you take the uh, factor of value as input and return one single value as output. However, here, so I can, for example, when I try to tidy this fit, it's actually the output is now one single value, right? It's set. It's actually a data frame. So in that case, we we cannot use summarize. So that's why the the do is actually provide. Uh, I would say interface for those arbitrary uh, operation, and also still to to put your output in the organized way based on the group information you want. Next slide. Yeah, so you see here we group by based on protein, and essentially the output here will be for each protein that give us the output uh, from the from the the output from the tidy the the output of the tidy version of the function call of the of the LM fit. So essentially here we have a term for each of the wrong and also estimate and also some other column for for standard statistics. Okay, so for approach three, after that, what we need to do is again to just to to filter out the turn to make it. We only want to keep the turn for run, and we want to remove the turn for feature, and then do the to re 
rename so to keep only those those row with strong effect and also to to take care of this this string vector a little bit to re, re, remove the wrong character here. And previously we also talked about when we when we use do we can actually assign assign the result in the new list. New new list of column, uh, list, list column here. So here, for example, again, I'm I'm creating the grouping information based on proteins here, and for each protein, I'm fitting a linear model here, and I want to save the li linear model fit into a new column called fit. And this one will create create a list column. Here we have one column called fit, and this column essentially is a list. It's a list to restore the the the, the fit re result of the linear model. So, for example, I can assess the linear model fit for the first protein through this double double bracket. Okay, that's quite quite a few stuff here. This, essentially we have 232, 232 rounds and the several features here. And the good thing to restore the data in, in this way is we it actually Go with Broom nicely. So Broom actually designed to design in in recognition of the grouping information uh, in your depot. So here we can actually operate operate on this this depot, and then we say, okay, we we want to get the parameter level of summary. So we pass this column on to to get a tidy version of the parameter summary. So that essentially for every protein we'll get the parameter level of summary. So we have run level summary and also the, the feature summary. And similarly since we since we save the linear model here, so we can use we can use the, this table to get different level of summary that we may be interested. In. So we can also get the use the augment to get the measurement or observation level of summary, essentially for every single feature and what's its original log to intensity and also what's the fit intensity. And what's the decision? Yeah, to to make sure. Let's also get the model based summary. Okay, now to to make sure we, are, we all understand the difference between the two. Let's first look at the result from the model based summary. That essentially gives us one row to summarize the model fitting for each protein. So here we have 30, 33 proteins. So it's a, it's a table with a 32 rows. And with augment here, if you took some time to run through it actually it's a table with this many 
rows. That essentially is the measurement in our original data set about the protein and the feature, its original uh, local intensity and the fit value, etc. And here is the, another level of summarization for the uh, at the parameter level. In this situation, uh, here is not corrected. So I think I do have one example about the, the p p value with correction in the very end. Yeah, but when we do the hypothesis testing for all the protein, and in the end we want to adjust. Not here, not here. Yeah. Yeah. So so far. Is everyone still with me uh, about this new concept about the list column? And uh, yeah, it may sound a bit tricky in the very beginning that you actually have a, a list or in the data frame in the data frame. Yeah, but but stick it, but but handy. I like, I think so. So here, I think it's a nice way to actually to keep together those related icons in one data frame. So for example, here, in, in the previous case that I just described, essentially we are keeping every model and the, and the protein in one row. So you don't need, need to, in data on, if you want to extract different level of, of summary for different protein, then you don't need to worry about, okay, how, how, should I find, how should I find my model and the match to what protein, that kind of situation. And also, because it's a list column, so it's a list, so we can actually use the list to, to save a, a variety of uh, different types of data. And so I think it's most useful to actually to use as the intermediate data structure, like the one we, we have. We, we have a list column to restore the, the data object. And then in the very end, if we want to extract this, this type of the representation or summary, then we we unfold or, or unnest the result back to the original type of data set that I'm going to talk about. Right, so to work with the list column, so there are three important things that we, we need to know, know about. The first one is to how to inspect the content in the list column that we all, all already have some practice. Essentially, we will be using the the double bracket to assess the element in the list. The next question will be then how to compute with the function that you care about or you, you want to apply on each element of the list. And later on, we also need to think about, okay, one, once we get those intermediate results, what's a good way to unfold or unnest the result back to the, the format that we we are more comfortable to, or that are more consistent, we can work on. And so in the remaining time in, in this lecture, we, we are going to talk about the nested data frame. It's actually a, a particular instance of uh, this column that make the data analysis, wrangling and modeling in a very consistent way. So. To generate the nested data frame, so I, I'll first to run this code trunk. So essentially, for this original data set, we are creating we are creating the grouping information based on the protein, and then for each protein, when we call this uh, nest function, that will actually pull out the pull out the, the data associated or corresponding to this protein into a table here. So this one is the 
original, the twin DIA2 people, we have 13 columns here. And now what I just did is actually, first I create a group information. And when I call the next here, that will actually to, to get all the, all the observation related to, uh, to these proteins and then to keep the re remaining column except for, for this protein. So for example, the data, the first one, that would essentially be the variable and observ observation for all the variable for, for the first protein. And the same way to do that would be, so you call the next function and with a minus sign. That means other than this protein, I'm going to, I'm going to nest together. Yes. Uh, so the question was, in the original, sorry, not this one. In the original, we have more than ten thousand. Okay, and then once we do the nested. No, be, yeah. Because the, the number for each, each protein is not exactly the same. Uh, That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that kind kind of create a nice hierarchy, right? Because I mean the, the protein is a level that we care about. And then once we create the nested data frame, okay, we, we have all the day all the data, all the feature level data associated with that protein that we can work on if we know how to how to do that. I was asking, so what, what, what the real benefit or? Right, so I, I would say in, in most of the analysis that involve summary function, if you can use summary function and to get some summary for each group, then I think it's pretty much covered by, by the DTYR. And here, because we are working with the model object and also even even with the a tidy way to tidy the model object using bloom the output is still the data frame yeah so somehow the it's more complicated than 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 the previous workflow so we need to first so i think the list column kind of provide a good for the infrastructure that we can actually save our data and, and also in an informative way. Now the next question is because, I mean, people are usually not that comfortable to work with the list. So the next question would be, so what's the tool available there that we can use to work with the, uh, the list that we can operate to easily? Yeah. Um, is it possible to GD plot the list of the columns or? Question was about, is it possible to do GG on this column, frankly, I never try myself. I guess, I would guess no. I would guess you, you still need to go, still need to transform back to the time. That's right. Right. 
but I could be wrong. Yeah. I I don't see any advantage to doing mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Okay, so, so now, again, just to re repeat, what we need to do here is uh, to get a sense how to inspect, inspect the data in the list and also how to operate, operate on those lists list with some function that we want to and also how to get back to the original format that we can use uh, other tools, for example, ggplot and also maybe dplyr. So here we look at this part already. So this will be, this double bracket would give us the all the data, all the feature level data corresponding to this code. And send us this one, essentially the first, the first row and in the data column. Now, we use, we use nest to create a nested data frame. And here the on nest essentially is a way to transform the nested data frame back to the original uh, regular formula. Just to make it clear what I mean. So this one is the output after we apply the on nest. So what on nest do does is for each for each row here in the nested data frame, we are going to repeat this protein net. In this case, would be six thousand seven hundred and twenty eight times add to this, this part of the data. And similarly, for the second protein here, it's going to be repeat several times, 3,712. 3, and then that give us back to the um, original data frame. Yeah, so that's what, what I mean. We, oh, we always want to use this nested data, data frame as an uh, intermediate data structure. And we extract something useful, for example, from the modeling, the parameter, and then we can, from there, we can unnest it back to the data frame that we feel com comfortable to work with the other tool. Yeah, the question was about the, 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 the storage for memory. Uh, I don't think so, but maybe, yeah, yeah. And I believe Kylie would talk about that maybe, or some other aspect about the me me memory storage and you know, also, yeah. Yeah, but I don't think so. Okay. Now we know how to, we talk about the, how to create a nested data frame and how to from I mean, come from from the nested data frame and go back to the original data frame, and now the remaining part, which is also the key, would be so how to operate on the this column. I'm going to introduce the 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 map function from the per package. So essentially, that's an idea to iterate over the this column, and I think they cons they provide some consistent syntax and make it easy to use here. So let's first look at what the map column means. So the input for the map column is essentially one vector, could be a could be a platonic vector or, or, or a list. And then you apply some operation based on the function here to each element of X and then save the result as a list. So for those of you who are familiar with it, they will, they will apply. That's essentially how they will apply. So everything we talk about here you, using the, the map function, you can also use they will apply essentially. Um, however, some, some people may prefer to use the, the map function and the, the, the parent of, of the map function from the per 
due to two, two reasons. One of them is that when we have some uh, anonymous fun function that we, we, we want to define uh, on, on the fly, then some handy shortcut in, in the map function make it easier or you, you need to a shorter code to, to do that. And also, um, when you when 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 you are when when you want to or you are sure that the the output of your function code should be maybe character or double logical uh, value, then it ensure the type stability with those those map function. And if it's not, then you throw out an error right right away so that you know it early on. Okay, so. Let's see how it goes. So we again we are working with this next DIA next column. And we know already so for for a subset of the data, so here's the function code we'll use. We want to know the relationship between the uh, log two intensity with the run and the feature effect and with some subset of the data. So now, in this nested data frame, we have 33 uh, row for each protein. And so essentially what we want to do here would be to get a way to operate on this particular table as a subset of the whole uh, data frame. So we can use mutate here to create a new column here. And what the content in the new column will be, we'll use this map function with an input as in, input data as the coming from this data column. And I'm going to, I will define the function in this way with the delta, starting with the delta. And then followed by what we, what we plan to do or what we plan to operate on this data at this position. So now it's actually doing a linear, linear model fitting for each of the protein using, using the subset of the data. As you can see here, we are creating one additional column called fit that has all the model fit for all the 33 proteins. Still with me at this point? Yeah, so if you know about L apply, so that's the way we'll do. We'll say, okay, this is our input data, the X that we'll operate on, and then we need to define the function. Yeah. And then that's a, okay, you'll, you'll call it, okay, a function X, and uh, so that, that's your data, or your path to, to this function. And then we want to fit the linear model. And so that's where your data should, should pass on to. But in, when you call the similar commands like you can map, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like one plus four. Yeah. So you that. Have, you have your fit equals map uh, data tilde and a lambda. Yeah. yeah, that's what. what what I mean, it, it actually provides some shortcut to define. Oh, that's yeah, okay. yeah, to define your function. Yeah, people may get confused like me in the beginning. Yeah, but some, somehow one, once you realize the pattern, so you just need to. Essentially, the important part will be okay. Where is the position that you want to pass on your data, and then how you you are going to operate on. Yeah. That will be the shortcut to de define the function. Or 
protocol the one. Across across all function that you, you want to pass with map actually. Oh just yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> So, okay, we are at, at this stage. So, so from the original nested uh, data frame, we make one step further to get the get the uh, LOM uh, fitting in one additional column. And then, since we know already, so how to hide the model object using the function from room. So we can actually add one more additional column here, where for each of the model fit, we apply the tidy function here. That will actually give us a data frame for the parameter level summary. And I'm going to save the result in the new this column called the parent. So now you can see, in this new column, we have we have the essentially the summary for this protein. Okay, so what we just did describe. Uh, to fit the model and also apply the tidy method here, you, you can actually get the same result by using LFY here. Okay, and another thing I mentioned early on is that, for example, for one model fit, for example, for this one, and there are some utility, utility function related. For example, we, we want to extract the sigma value from this model. That returned one numerical value. So in that case, you, you know you are, you are getting one value back. So you can also, with, with this map function that, and you, you know already by applying the sigma function, you are return the double value. So you can you can make it clear here. So in the newly created column, that will be a, a factor of double variable. Okay, and. We talk about already, so how to unless your data back to its original form. I think now, now since we get all the results that we we needed, then we can actually to unless the data and based on based on the parameter level of the summary that we care about for each of the model fit. So here I I will operate on this nested data frame and pass on to the unnest function based on the column code parent. Right, so that will essentially give me uh, for all the proteins and uh, what's the, um, what's the return, what, what, what's the factor, and, and, and also the, the estimate for each round. Okay, now just to complete the whole story. So, in approach four, with nested data frame, so we are first to create a nested data frame um, based on protein here, and then for each protein, we'll fit the linear model. We we know how to do that with LM, and then with the map function, we can create a new column to save the the linear model, and we can use the tidy function to extract the estimate for each protein. Again, adding a, a new, uh, this column. 
and then transform back to the original form using the unmasked here. So here will be to create a nested data frame. And for the nested data frame, we are going to add a list column, which is the uh, LM fit for each group data related to one protein. And from there, we'll tidy, tidy up the, the model object and save the parameter level of summary in this column. And after that, we unnest the, the nested data frame back to the original form and then do some later uh, sort of cleaning of the, the string. So this will give us the run level summary for each protein, every run. I believe that's wrong thing. I'm not sure. So so the the question what what's about what the procedural value is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think likely it, it's just because they are too small, I think. Okay, so any question on, until this point? Yeah, so just to, to summarize what we have done so far. So in, in this section, we actually want to do the protein level summarization in essentially for every protein in every run. And so first we talk about two approach by using loop for loop. And also then we talk about the, the problem with a for loop. Number one, um, is we, we actually still need to have one better way to tidy the, to tidy the model object. So it, it, it's not actually related to the for loop. But the other one would be when you use a for loop, we are not saving the model object. Even you can create another list to save the model object. You need to track back, back and forth to make sure your model object actually is corresponding to the right protein that the, the, the protein that you want to match. So then we talk about the this column and also the next data frame. That's somehow to save or stru structure our, our, our data set in a better format that we can actually we, we have all the information about the, from the model, uh, from the data, from the modeling, and also the summary of, of the model in the same row that we can actually assess very easily. Now, so I, I add some content in the last minute, so it's already on GitHub. It's about the hypothesis testing for all the protein, actually. So right now, what we talk about is just to the run level summarization for protein um, intensity or abundance. But to complete the whole story, ye yesterday we talked about, we, we, are, we are also interested in knowing um, which protein are differentially abundant between di different conditions, for example. So now I want to use the run level summary we just get and then following a uh, similar strategy you, using nested data, nested data frame and also the map function to carry out the hypothesis testing for all the protein. So here, just to first to get the run, I think we have this part already, um, but just to save it in this run DIA here so that gives us the run level summary for each protein and run and the log two intensity here. Now to make any comparison, we need to know the grouping or, or, or the sample annotation for each run here. So I'm going to create 
a design table by selecting selecting the, the column from run all the way to the to basic column. Essentially all those columns related to the simple annotation. So we have all the information for the 232 uh, run. And then I will merge or join this uh, design back to the run level summary. And I will assign it to the run DIA tree. OK, now we are adding some additional column for the sample annotation. And in this case, I'll still be doing something uh, very simple. I'll just try to compare the the summary, the the run level, the protein level summary, and to see if it's got governed by this zygosity vector here. So what I'm doing here is I'll first to create a nested data frame. group based on proteins here. So here, again, we have 30, 33 proteins. So 33 row and the, with all the data, all the data related to, to the wrong level summary. And then I'll, I'll do a t-test for each of them and to see whether or not this log two intensity at protein level is governed by the zygosity. So now we get one additional column uh, for for the output of hypothesis testing, and we can now we have all the two already. We can use a glance from Bloom to extract the the summary of your hypothesis testing for each protein. Okay, that we saw in, in this format. And in the very end, probably what we really care about is just those summary associated with each of the protein. So I'll do the our nest based on the test summary. So that give me the information about the estimate. The estimate one and two is essentially is the, the mean in group one and mean in group two. And estimate here is the difference between between the mean here. And the test statistic we have here and the p-value, et cetera, with some, some, some other standard statistic that you'll get from the uh, two, two sample t-test. And I'll, I'm going to just select some most important column that we care about here. The difference and the test statistic p-value and also confidence interval. So now we get a summary for all, all the 33 proteins. And one question, one earlier question about so do we about the, the the multiple testing correction here? Here, be because we are testing several proteins together, and in particular, Harmis experiment is always a good idea. I mean, when, when you are doing multiple testing and you you want to adjust the p value. So here, we are going to do a Benjamin and Heffer adjustment. Uh, by calling this uh, p-adjust function, and then add add a new column to restore the adjusted p-value, and after that, um, based on based on the interest of uh, your investigation, you may want to either sort by p-value or create some additional filtering step, for example, 
filter and spec based on the statistical significance. Sometimes you, you may also want to add some practical significance. That will be based on the difference here, the pole, pole, local pole change. Yeah, so I hope that somehow convinced that uh, by going through this approach would be easier than the, the one in, in the first lecture when we talk about the case study and that we want to do the t-test for all the program. And I think here we, we have a more cleaner and more in, intuitive way to, to get, get through the, the, the whole workflow. Yeah, so that will be all for, for this section. So any question? I'm going to have, yeah. Okay, if not, I think it's good for lunch. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>